and your animals are, are, are reproducing, you are now a part of the Invisible Ark project. And uh, you are uh, a steward of these captive animals, and you are now keeping these animals for this planet and for the future generations of this planet. Uh, you are now entrusted with the future survival of these animals. Uh, and uh, we, it's our great duty and, uh, and, and, and responsibility to ensure that these animals survive into the future. So at some point when the governments of the world does become more, more favorable to the environment, we can release these species back into the wild, into the native habitats they come from, and hopefully repopulate the rivers and streams that they originally come from. Thank you for everybody that's keeping these uh, rare fish species and thank you for everybody that's breeding them. You guys are all amazing and uh, everybody that's making a difference in the world. Uh, you know, we need this right now, positivity. And uh, since we are all stuck at home, I figured it's a really good time to reevaluate our core goals and uh, beliefs. And this is what I believe in. And uh, I hope that inspires one of you guys or many of you guys to doing the same thing. And uh, I hope you guys great success in your breeding endeavors thank you again what's going on everybody it's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden and we're here in front of my L333 King Tiger Playco tank uh, this house is my group of nine L333 King Tiger Playcos as well as uh, six Geophagus Tapajos a pair of discus and uh, two Congo Tetras it's a 35 gallon aquarium. Um, the discus you're seeing in the middle of the screen night right now uh, had an accident yesterday where she got sucked into the siphon while I was doing water changes. So that little ring there you're seeing is actually the damage from the siphon. But she's fine now. Uh, she's going to heal up completely fine and uh, there is no infection. I'm keeping a close eye on it. Uh, but in today's video, we're just going to look at our King Tiger Plecos. I'll put a lot of B-roll footage in the background so you can actually see the fish. Uh, but basically this video is going to highlight care and maintenance and feeding and whatnot uh, of these particular fish. So if you haven't subscribed, this is a great time to subscribe. Uh, please subscribe down below and hit that notification icon for this type of videos as well as uh, more updates on these fish as well as all the other fish in the aquarium room. Uh, and if you have any particular things that you would like to know, uh, you can always comment and ask me. This video is actually a request from a viewer. Uh, that uh, wanted to get a group of King Tiger Plecos for himself and uh, he wanted to know what the care and uh, feeding requirements are and I'm just going to give a basic idea of what I do what temperature I keep this fish at as well as uh, what I feed them uh, and I'm going to give you some information from planetcatfish.com it's a really good resource if you are going to keep any type of catfish uh, especially loricariids and uh, hypancestors um, there's a lot of good information there available for this type of fish. Uh, it says here that there's 26 breeding reports that they have on record. Uh, so you can get those reports if you wanted to. Uh, also, they also give you information on the fish. So I'll give you some of that. Uh, these fish are actually collected from Rio Zingo, Brazil, which is in the Amazon basin, which is the same river as Zebra Plecos. And many of the other hype ancestors we like to keep also come from Rio Zingu and similar uh, close by areas. Uh, so the temperature is very similar and the pH and uh, the hardness requirements are very similar to the Zebra Plecos. Uh, the pH it says here is 6.4 to 7.2, although these fish here are at 7.5 pH. Uh, uh, this is actually in Toronto tap water and they're fine in that tap water and uh, they also seem to be breeding fine because my friend has a group of L333 King Tiger Plecos that are breeding in his facility that is breeding in Toronto tap water. Uh, these fish were not bred by myself. I bought these particular fish in uh, July of last year uh, as a birthday present for myself. Uh, they were a little under two inches and now they are about, the larger ones are a little over three inches and the smaller ones are just getting close to three inches or just passing three inches. There's some really nice fish in this group. Uh, I bought 10 in total. I lost one within the first few weeks and uh, due to aggression and just didn't eat. So basically um, that's one of the things I want to cover. If you are going to buy a group, you're going to find your fish at about 1.5 to 2 inches of length. Usually breeders would like to sell you fish at about 1.5 inches. So that's the most common size you are going to find these fish. I recommend getting at least 8 to 10 fish uh, to start. 
uh, if you are going to get them for spawning purposes, that's a really good number. Even as a group, that's a really good number to get because uh, the group reduces the aggression for individual fish. So um, get at least 8 to 10 fish. Uh, and uh, the next thing you want to consider is when they're young, they do not, um, they will hide in your tank. So if you put like 10 really small, let's say one and a half inch King Tiger Placos into this tank, you would not see those fish ever again because they would probably end up going and hiding and the larger fish in this tank will definitely uh, outcompete the little baby fish for food so the f fish the baby fish the, the placo babies will hide first of all and they would not come out to eat and the other fish will eat out all the food and doesn't matter how much food you put in there the, the baby placos would not get enough food to grow and thrive and they would most likely die because of malnutrition so what you what should you do when you get your baby fish <clears throat> when you get your group of high fencers the first thing you should do is put them into a quarantine tank uh, especially because they are coming from another system so you want to quarantine these fish secondarily you want to put them into a tank that's about 10 gallons to 20 gallons uh, a bare bottom tank with a few uh, structures is ideal uh, give a couple of hiding places, but not too many. Um, if you give them too many hiding places, then the fish will tend to hide uh, in different places and you would not be able to feed them um, effectively. Uh, so have, giving them a few hiding places would ensure that they're all together and that you can kind of uh, feed to that area, kind of target feed if you have to. Um, this only has to be done for the first couple of days just to keep an eye on them. Once the fish are comfortable in your system, they're very easy fish. Uh, all placos are actually very easy, especially high ancestors, one of the easiest types of fish to keep, especially because they don't grow that large. Uh, these guys top out at about 6 inches, uh, so it's about 15 centimeters uh, in uh, metric, and uh, that's very rare. Those are the largest males. Usually, you would find fish that are about 5 inches or a little bit over for the females and the, the males being about five and a half inches uh, to six inches for the larger males um, and um, they're actually very peaceful comparatively to other hype ancestors uh, they do have aggression but there is not as much aggression as uh, let's say the L471s uh, they can get along better with each other these guys are in a 35 gallon aquarium and uh, I'm not worried about keeping these guys in this aquarium long term uh, these nine fish, they are uh, established in this tank, they have their pecking order and they have no issues at this point. But if I were to add any new males, for example, in this tank, there might be issues. That's something I don't usually do. I, I usually like to keep my groups as I get them. Uh, or if I were to add new fish, I would add them when the, the group is smaller. So if I were to buy, let's say, five from one breeder and five from another breeder, just to get genetic diversity, which is a really good idea, I would probably want to buy both groups uh, somewhere close uh, along the same time as well at the same size um, just so that they are like compatible to each other you don't want to have fish that are smaller um, going into a group that is established and then having to compete for food and territory and you know being being bullied by the larger fish which could happen so this is something to keep in mind um, the other thing you would want to consider is uh, feeding them a very heavy meaty diet Especially from the time you get them, you want to feed them a high quality diet. Uh, there's a lot of different foods that are available. I, I have a lot of foods highlighted in a lot of my other videos. So if you haven't checked those out, I highly recommend you check those out. Uh, especially the Zebra Playco video, uh, the basics and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of foods that I feed my Zebra Playcos, the same foods I feed these guys. Um, they eat a little bit more green stuff than the Zebra Playcos, but Generally, I feed everybody the same food. These guys get spirulina and uh, the only thing that these guys get that the zebra pecos don't get is the kelp vapors, which is by uh, North, North Fin. Uh, so this stuff right here, um, North Fin kelp vapors, they get this like once every six weeks or so um, as a treat just to flush out their guts. Um, and uh, they get everything else they get is the same as the zebra pecos. Um, for food wise so if you want to check out what type of foods I feed them just check out the zebra play of feed feeding video and uh, that will give you an idea and as well there's a video about all the foods I feed my entire fish room there's an hour-long video I made 
of all the foods and the nutritional value of into each of these foods so I highly recommend you check that out as well I'll try to put a link at the end of this video so you can check it out after you watch this uh, aside from that um, their temperature wise these guys are in at about 81 degrees Fahrenheit right now this tank uh, in the winter the tank was about 79 degrees Fahrenheit uh, they were fine uh, it says here that on planet catfish their temperature range is 26 degrees Celsius to 31 degrees Celsius or 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit to 87.8 degrees Fahrenheit I do not recommend keeping your fish anything anywhere above 86 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 30 degrees Celsius um, which is a little too warm in, in my personal um, view um, but anything below 30 degrees or let's say 86 degrees Fahrenheit or above 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius is fine um, if the temperature does drop below 78 degrees for a few days it shouldn't be an issue I've seen these fish in temperatures at about 75 degrees in pet stores and my friend's store usually I have seen them at 75 76 degrees sometimes the temperature in the bottom tanks in there are 73 degrees and the fish are fine short term they, they are in those uh, holding systems for a few weeks uh, they don't show any signs of distress they eat fine they, they are doing fine but I don't recommend keeping them at those temperatures long term uh, if you are going to keep them long term the recommended temperature is 78 degrees Fahrenheit for the lower end uh, I would recommend the average should be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what you should uh, strive to maintain. Uh, pH wise, pH should be a neutral pH. Uh, you can keep them uh, in alkaline water. Like um, these guys are at 7.5. Uh, they seem they're fine. They breed at, at Toronto tap water, which is fine. Uh, our TDS here is 185 parts per million or 180 parts per million. Uh, the TDS in this tank is about 200 parts per million. Uh, it never goes up above that so when I do the water changes it comes down to about 180 parts per million and then it goes back up to about 200 parts per million between water changes and the nitrate levels stay under 20 parts per million usually as long as I maintain my, my weekly water change schedule uh, the plants definitely help out with keeping the nitrate levels low so that's something to consider the sand is not necessary uh, I recommend the thin layer of sand uh, the breeding furniture is almost the same as the Zebra Plecos. Uh, I will make a separate video regarding a breeding setup for Plecos. There's actually a video in my channel on how I set up uh, my L471 breeding tank. So you can check that out as well. Uh, but I'll make a separate video on an extensive video on how to set up a Zebra Pleco and a, and a L333 King Tiger Pleco breeding setup and I'll put that up soon so stay tuned for that and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get updated when that video gets uploaded um, there's nothing much that I think I can cover on these guys they're pretty similar to uh, most of the other high ancestors that I keep and breed uh, they have exactly the same requirements in terms of uh, water parameters as zebra plecos almost the same food requirements like I said earlier um, so uh, if you are going to keep these guys, uh, they're going to be like a stepping stone for keeping zebra plecos. Uh, so they're a really good fish to start into getting into hype ancestors and stuff. Uh, also relatively cheaper than zebra plecos. Uh, I paid, I think, under 50 bucks a fish for these guys. They sell between 40 and 65 dollars um, uh, for smaller fish under 2 inches depending on who you get them from and the quality of the fish uh, these guys are really nice uh, they have really nice markings and they are also uh, from a particular locale um, it's from a breeder so I have uh, asked him to confirm that they are L333's they are f one so you know that's why I paid a little bit more for these guys um, but um, in usual price, price range is about 30 to 50, uh, 40 to 65 dollars uh, for a 2 inch fish and uh, you can buy larger six inch fish for anywhere from 85 to 100 dollars per fish so a group like my friend had a group of eight for sale for 800 so um they were adults they were about four years old and they were spawning and they were very nice high white coverage uh very beautiful fish and they were like cheaply priced at 100 dollars so um, if you know it all depends on the particular fish markings and how the, the fish looks the lineage uh, where it comes from uh, all those things factor in uh, there are also <clears throat> quite a bit of hybrids in the market so keep an eye out for that because uh, essentially 
that's another video I'm gonna I'm gonna make really soon so stay tuned for that uh, but if you are gonna get them get them from a reputable breeder so you you do know what you're getting and uh, keep them separate from other hype ancestors because they can crossbreed with uh, pretty much every other hype ancestors including your zebra plecos I assume um, and uh, they can produce viable young which makes them all the same species technically scientifically speaking speaking because a species is defined by two animals being able to reproduce together and produce viable young what that means is they are going to produce babies that can reproduce themselves uh, and make more babies so if any animal that can have babies with another animal uh, and and produce viable babies is the same species so if these guys for example can breed with the the l 236s which is done quite regularly in the hobby to get uh, you know more interesting patterns and uh, super whites and whatnot uh, to increase the value of the spawns um, you can definitely get viable young out of those so those babies are viable they they can reproduce with each other or with other hype ancestors and produce more babies so technically uh, at least scientifically speaking they are falling into the same group the same species uh, so um, any hype ancestors that can reproduce with the other hype ancestors in that context is is, is the same species but uh, my theory is that even though they are potentially the same species they are from different locales and they have different markings and, and body characteristics and physical characteristics so therefore we should strive our best to keep the, the different species of them separately or the different locales or different collection points separately uh, and uh, keep the, 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 the types of uh, the diversity as pure as possible for conservation purpose. Now the reason I'm saying that is because we are all a part of this giant uh, thing called the invisible arc. Every person that is privately keeping fish and animals in general and breeding those animals you guys are all part of this thing called the invisible art uh, there's a book written by this gentleman uh, uh, I think his name is George Baker uh, David G Baker and Tracy M Baker those are the two people's names and the book is called the invisible art in defense of captivity it's a really good book everybody should get a copy and read it it's about 40 pages long uh, it's very hard to find now but libraries should have the copy of this book uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because once you have animals in captivity yourself and your animals are, are, are reproducing, you are now a part of the Invisible Ark project and uh, you are uh, a steward of these captive animals and you are now keeping these animals for this planet and for the future generations of this planet. Uh, you are now entrusted with the future survival of these animals uh, and uh, we, it's our great duty and, uh, and, and and responsibility to ensure that these animals survive into the future so at some point when the governments of the world does become more more favorable to the environment we can release these species back into the wild into the native habitats they come from and hopefully repopulate the rivers and streams that they originally come from so we have to to to, to preserve the biodiversity of these regions that are thre threatened right now to uh, uh, you know being uh, destroyed by human activity so having said that being a steward of these animals you are re responsible for their well-being as well as their reproduction so uh, that's something to keep in mind and and please if you are gonna keep any type of fancy placos go into it with the intention of breeding them um, and uh, see they're very active fish actually the, the, there's a trick to getting your placos to be active that's another video I'm gonna make soon so please stay tuned for that and uh, subscribe um, yeah and see how how you can get your play close to be more active and outgoing but uh, if you are gonna keep these fish please be a steward and and please be responsible and uh, keep the the different collection points or different species separately or the different locales separately the different L numbers as well uh, try and breed them try and give them uh, groups uh, try and keep groups of them as well Try and get them to breed in your facility and, and redistribute them back into other hobbyists and, and, and fish people. You are going to make money from it as well. You are doing a service to the species that you are keeping. So this is what I'm going to leave you guys with uh, today, which is basically uh, conservation. 
uh, and the invisible art. So, you know, something to consider. You are all now a part of the invisible art. I have been uh, in, brought up into this concept as a child. My parents fully believed in this. My parents from the 80s, they've been breeding uh, endangered animals, uh, turtles and tortoises, uh, Sri Lankan star tortoises. Uh, they used to breed Malabar giant squirrels. Uh, when I was a child and uh, we had a lot of different enclosures as well as uh, aquariums and ponds and whatnot and I, I was brought up into this project as a child and I fully believe in, in captive breeding of animals for conservation so uh, that's uh, what I'm going to leave you guys with today uh, and I thank you so much for your support I love you all this is a quite a lengthy video and uh, thank you so much for watching it this far and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and hit that notification icon and comment down below and let me know if there's anything else that you want me to cover if I missed anything as well as uh, how you feel about being a part of the Invisible Art, Art Project and uh, now that you are aware of this reality that you are living. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for everybody that's keeping these uh, rare fish species and thank you for everybody that's breeding them. You guys are all amazing and uh, everybody that's making a difference in the world. Uh, you know, we need this right now, positivity, and uh, since we are all stuck at home, I figured it's a really good time to reevaluate our core goals and uh, beliefs, and this is what I believe in, and uh, I hope that inspires one of you guys, or many of you guys are doing the same thing, and uh, I hope you guys great success in your breeding endeavors. Thank you again. I love you all. I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless.